I'm Dr. Chani Kumar. I'm working in the field of proteomics. And in this video, I will show you how little workers called proteins are changing what we know about health, disease, and shaping the future of personalized medicine. Hi, I'm Chantni, and I'm a biochemist and molecular biologist having a PhD in biochemistry. I'm working in the field of so-called proteomics. So we are really interested in how does these proteins overall change inside our cells or tissue or um, organ. Um, and it depends quite on um, how what kind of disease mechanism we look at. So some people look at how does the protein changes um, in cancer cells, other look at um, diseases such as um, diabetes or um, other um, diseases or maybe even in infections. So it's quite interesting um, what's happening on the molecular level. And I thought maybe it's a really cool thing to take you with me to the lab and show you what I'm currently researching on and um, how does it translate maybe uh, into uh, clinical trials or in general clinical applications. And um, yeah, just enjoy um, the trip into the lab. Hello and welcome to my lab bench. Hi guys and welcome to my lab bench. Well, you're gonna ask Chantney, what are you actually researching on? I'm taking a closer look at your proteins inside your cell and how they are different to um, healthy state and disease state. So I have right now three major projects that I'm working on. Project one is still something out of my PhD. So I'm interested, how does the centromere behave when you have a new factor that we identified? And I want to know, is this factor maybe crucial for the centromere? Now you're gonna ask, what is the centromere? Well, I think you all know that cells divide and have to equally distribute the DNA, right? And the centromere, it's a really tiny part in the chromosome, play a really significant role how the DNA later on is segregated. So in that sense, with this new factor, I want to know if this maybe contributes to a better segregation and if you have alterations of these proteins, so it means it's overexpressed, it may lead to um, problems in equally distributing the DNA. Now we come to my second project here as a postdoc. And it's quite interesting because we have generated cell lines where we knocked out certain genes that encode for specific enzymes. And we were really interested um, if the cells survive these knockouts, what does it mean for the whole cell in the protein level? So what we are trying now to decipher is, is maybe some other enzyme upregulated and taking over maybe the enzyme activity of some um, which is knocked out or is there maybe some other compensating mechanism why the cells actually survive and now my third project so right now i want to become an independent researcher which means i want to lead a group with my own scientific uh, research interests and i'm really interested in one specific modification called o-glycosylation and that one already it already has been shown that it plays a crucial role in type 2 diabetes formation and um, also in other cancer types. And I do really want to understand what is really different when um, cells start to have different kind of glycosylation. And I think it's uh, gonna be really interesting because you can um, have other collaborations with medical professionals because you can understand why certain cancer maybe go in one direction or the other. Now you're gonna ask, why is it important to study actually the proteins in our cell? Well, it's super crucial because they do all the work in our cell. They are so important that sometimes when you have differences in these functions, that they lead to diseases. So it makes totally sense to understand why are they altered and why um, something is not in the right direction anymore and uh, why maybe some of the proteins are going haywire whereas in other diseases maybe they are totally downregulated. and if we understand this much much better we can actually predict diseases much earlier and even prevent maybe some of these diseases. Now I want to take you into the cell culture because right now I'm working a lot with human cell lines so it means I have human cells 
results in a petri dish and right now it's a part of my first project where i want to know if i over express my protein of interest um, what does it mean for the cell so right now these cells are over expressing now for over six days and you know, I want to know, is the morphology different? So do the cells look a bit different under the microscope? Or do they change maybe in the protein composition? Or maybe um, do I see that uh, for some reason, the um, protein and the DNA level do alter, which means when you do um, cell division, so when the cell decides to divide, um, do I see maybe problems in that? Okay guys, now I'm gonna show you my uh, cells and uh, very importantly, you have to be a as septic as possible, which means um, you need to disinfect your hands and in this case also the um, gloves so you don't take into any contamination into my uh, incubator. So um, here are the cells. This is my cells that I'm looking right now at it. And um, as you can see, um, usually when you work with human cell culture, you always have this kind of um, pinky-ish uh, media that contains everything that the cells need to grow. Now we're gonna look at the microscope, how the cells look like. Okay guys, now I'm really interested to know how the cells look like. And we are at day six and um, yeah, we're gonna see the cells under the microscope now. Now you will see how the cells look like, hopefully, under the microscope. Here you see them. Quite interesting because there are not as many cells and most of them do show a different morphology, which is quite interesting for me. So I will follow up on this. Now you saw my cells and to understand what's uh, maybe different in the proteome, um, I'm right now in a facility that is specialized in so-called proteomics. So what we do is we take the whole bulk of the cells and extract the proteins that are inside and analyze them with a specific machine called mass spectrometer. So now I'm gonna take you to the machine because I'm also taking care of the machine and I'm really excited to show you what this machine can do. I'm really excited to show you now the machine. That's the mass spectrometer, my little baby. And um, I'm gonna tell you how proteomics actually work. First of all, I told you that we have to get out the proteins uh, of our cells. So once we have them in our little tube, we actually need to digest them, which means we are using specific enzymes to chop them in little pieces. And these little pieces are called peptides that we actually measure with the mass spectrometer. And how does it work is we identify a certain peak, we identify the mass of it, and then with a specific algorithm, we find out which peptide sequence matches to which protein sequence. And once we have that, we can identify which proteins are actually present in our sample. Okay, I'm just giving you a little example now. How does this look like? And we go to the computer. We have here not a stable spray sometimes, but what we see is here um, actually when you have this liquid system that helps me to get the peptides to the mass spectrometer, um, it detects certain masses. And once this is done, we can go here to our um, analyzing tool. And this analyzing tool helps us to um, distinguish, for instance, I don't know, we can just open up one of my um, samples and as you can see it detects the protein groups and when you go inside you can see which proteins have been detected and how many peptides actually really match to the protein and um, if you want we can have a look at um, a certain protein for instance you can see here how many peptides match the actual sequence of this protein and if you're really interested which peptides have been identified you can go here and check them um, quite interesting is how many peptides you have um, so you can distinguish between if you have a healthy cell and you have 
maybe a cell that is not okay, that you can check, okay, how does the protein maybe behave in the healthy cell and how does it behave in the treated cell, for instance, and does maybe, for instance, a drug specifically targets this protein and therefore leads to, maybe it gets degraded in the cell or maybe it loses its function. So all these things you can um, analyze with proteomics and that's why I'm really excited because the whole field is going into the clinical direction. It means so once you have understood how this works, you can understand what's happening on the protein level. And this has already been done in several trials where they also um, look at blood samples and analyze biomarkers that might be different from the disease state and the healthy state. So I'm quite excited to show you that I'm currently working in this really awesome cool research field and i hope you had a really nice time following me and i hope you learned something and um yeah uh, thanks a lot for your time and now we see us in the home bar. hi and welcome back i hope you enjoyed the little lab tour and uh, what i'm doing and hopefully you got uh, a bit of an insight on how does it look like to work uh, in a a facility that is specialized on proteomics. I want to thank you for your time and your interest on joining me on this really cool journey, exploring what proteomics is and what I'm currently researching on. And um, I'm pretty excited to move the field more forward with my uh, peers and um, yeah maybe who knows um, at some point uh, one of your blood samples will be analyzed with proteomics hopefully helping you to um, prevent diseases and um, yeah um, also just telling you that you're doing completely fine i want to thank professor dave for giving me this great opportunity um, to show my uh, research here and um, I'm feeling very honored uh, to be part of this uh, series. And uh, once again, I want to thank you. As a last thing, um, in my spare time, I'm doing science communication. So if you are interested, um, I'm having a YouTube channel and a podcast called Daily Dose of Honest Science. So if you are interested in uh, more science of uh, medicine and um, other science disciplines, um, feel free to uh, come by and um, have fun while I'm interviewing many, many great people and uh, talking and discussing new breakthroughs. And um, yeah, my motto is, and I hope that's uh, resonating with you, let a little dose of honest science in your life and brighten up your day.